I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Mary Schley, costume designer behind Yellow Jackets. And uh, I mean, this is a show that half takes place in the 90s, other half is set in modern times. But I actually just wanted to start with your conception, you know, and what 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 you think of the 90s as in terms of aesthetic, especially for the teen girls like we see in this show and how maybe that informed the styling for the for the teenage girls of of the characters. Right. Well, the mid nineties, I think is often confused with the aughts, which is also trending right now. Um, uh, but it's, it's, you know, the mid nineties is a much more, especially on the East coast where this takes place in the, uh, in New Jersey, where I grew up, it's, it's a little bit more naturalistic than later in the nineties where people were over plucking their eyeballs eyebrows and you know it it was larger silhouettes it was more naturalistic the grunge obviously was a huge trend and that was really just coming out of what people wore in a naturalistic way in in um, Seattle and um and um so I think and it was a much more rebellious time too especially when you think about girls in that time, it's like riot girls and that kind of um, taking back, that kind of idea of girl power is coming into blossoming at that moment in time. So, um, but nevertheless, as you see in our cast, there's lots of different types of girls. There's not just one. So you have people who are, uh, there's also sort of a very conservative preppy version, you know, not very conservative, but you know, leaning towards that kind of classic preppy on the East Coast, and then there's, uh, which we see in Jackie, um, you know, like the limited and that kind of thing, um, and the Gap, and then you know we have alternative, which is a little bit more Shauna, and then we have very very alternative, which is um, Natalie, right. and then Misty, which is just kind of nerdy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I think also the the soccer jerseys in the beginning are, are very important in a visual design that I feel like when you think about this show, or at least when I think about the show, those jerseys, for whatever reason, they just come to mind. Um, yeah. So could you talk about just the color choices and the design for those? And also, I guess, what your collaboration was with the showrunners of just really establishing that aesthetic at the beginning? Right. Well, the showrunners obviously came up with the idea that this team would be called the Yellow Jackets. Right. And they really wanted it to be um, blue and yellow or blue and gold as opposed to black and gold. So that's where we, that was our um, jumping off point. And, um, you know, we did a lot of research from yearbooks of the time and um, friends of mine who were on soccer teams in New Jersey. And um, you can, we, you know, we took the silhouette now is very, actually very different is what we learned from what the nineties. And we, you know, we had to use baggier sh shirts and shorts and different layering. And then they had a very distinctive, one of the looks from that period was a very distinctive polo collar. So we made a lot of those jerseys and tried to give it a real like, Amer like all American feel to it. Right. Well, I also um, wanted to touch on all the four main characters, kind of give them their own little section here. Um, so, I mean, starting with Shauna, she's this straight A student, um, kind of alternative, like you said, but not necessarily one of the popular girls, not necessarily like a, an outcast either. It's kind of in between, you know, we see like jean jacket and plaid and just uh, more muted tones, I would say. Yeah. Uh, same thing as an adult. Um, so what was the process for figuring out just the kind of signature Shauna look? I mean, Shauna's a little in the beginning of this show is kind of yeah she's a little bit every girl but not kind of not neither there she's really our access point to this story and um i really took a lot of cues from the fact that she's listening to liz fair in the car when jackie gets in and changes the music too um so i think you know she's like you said she's wearing muted tones she wears a lot of clouds she's very she's more grounded and she's in jackie's shadow and um 
her character and Jackie's were very much designed in um, conjunction because they really are reflecting each other a lot. Um, so where Jackie is more mainstream and preppy, a little bit preppy, and Shauna has a more thoughtful, introspective kind of look to her. Um, and Jackie is like popular girl, front and center. She's really representing a class too of people. And she's a little bit wealthier than um, Shauna. And so all that, all those subtleties are supposed to be expressed through their clothing. Um, I also would just say that um, like when you think about them getting ready for the party that they, the bonfire party, Jackie's wearing this uh, dress we made for her, which is like a crushed velvet, um, sexier version of her look. You know, she's always a little bit sexy, very aware of her body and her attractiveness. And um, she's encouraging Shauna to also, and Shauna tries on a bunch of things and doesn't want to wear that. She's not comfortable with that. But eventually when they get to the party, they're both wearing very similar <laughs> looks. <laughs> yeah. That's very so. interesting. Yeah, they really are kind of, they, they do work in conjunction with each other. That's that's fascinating. Um, but then with Thaisa, you know, in the past, I feel like she just has a kind of a sporty look, I would say, you know, you know, tomboyish. And then in the present, she's, I think she's very well put together, very professional. I, I would say maybe a little more upscale than the other characters. So how did you find her look? Um. Well, Thaisa in the past is, I mean, I think the sporty look is also showing her strength and she's very much a leader just innately. Um, she, yeah, she almost always wears pants. It's a little tomboy. And then later on, I, um, we, we don't exactly know how Thaisa made her money or, but she is wearing very expensive clothing too and looks very professional and is very fashion. Um, higher fashion. And I think that is part of, I, I, she might be one of the characters who knows herself the least. I mean, spoiler alert, she's doing a lot of things that she doesn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and um, committing atrocities that she's not even aware of, I don't think. And so that clothing is very much part of her mask and her disguise in adult life. They're all fronting a little bit because they're trying to contain the story of what, you know, hide the story of where they've been and of their trauma, basically. Yeah, I was actually talking to the showrunners recently and they're kind of mentioning the performative aspect of, you know, a lot of the, the girls and the women when they get to adulthood, they're, they're all kind of, they have a, their own mask in a way. So that yes. sort of speaks to that. And kind of speaking with that, maybe uh, Natalie, you know, very much the rocker grungy look, which I would say is pretty consistent in both the teenage and the adult version of her. Uh, it's it's giving me Courtney Love, you know, that kind of aesthetic. Um, we've seen, you know, leopard print, that kind of thing, leather jacket. And I think honestly, of all the main characters, you can you can just, I feel like you can tell just by the way she dresses, maybe the kind of person she is. Um, and I also feel like the makeup maybe even works in tandem to sort of complete the look. So uh, love to know your thoughts on her look and then also what maybe even the collaboration you had with the makeup department. Right. Well, I mean, one of the challenges of the show obviously has been always to take these two very different actors and try to make it believable that they're both um, the same person. I think casting was amazing. I really have to say on the show is one of the exceptional things. But so we tried to create links between those, the past and the young um, in most cases. But like in the pilot, Natalie, when you see her uh, adult Natalie at our first shot of her is like meditating at this um, uh, rehab community and she's wearing a very expensive cashmere sweater and jewelry and so we know that she has now the clues here are that she's come into some money but that is very much a disguise and when she leaves that facility immediately she's going to get a gun out of her storage space and so I think actually that's her costume and then as she comes back to New Jersey and starts getting back in touch with 
class, her class character is coming up more and more. So we're seeing the links with the leper print and that's also kind of some wilderness theme in there, some animal with skin themes. But yeah, I mean, Juliet was very um, inspired a lot by um, Debbie Harry and different um, punk aspects to um, this character as well. So yeah, she still wears a leather jacket. It's just a much more expensive one. And she's still wearing leopard pants, but now they're Dolce & Gabbana where they were. Um, exactly. The store. Um, store. Right. Um, and then, you know, with Misty, she is this misfit. I, I feel like she, she, she loves cats. We see some cats on her shirts. Um, you know, obviously the big glasses. And also, I guess for her, I think the curly hair is really helping to define her look in a way. Um, so how did you kind of figure out the Misty character without also maybe going too over the top with it? Right. I mean, that was, she's so fun. One of the, um, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I took a lot from the cat theme kind of came from that um, scene where she's watching the rat swim in the pool and doing nothing and just kind of the way a, a cat might play with its prey and never kill it and just torture it. So that's kind of, but it's also cute because Misty always likes to see it come across as cheery and cute and peppy. And she's the, you know, the team, she's so into the team and wants to be part of it. Um, but deep inside, you know, don't fuck with her. <laughs> Sorry. Bleep. Um, so we also had really intense braces on her in the pilot, which I don't think we did for the season because it might have been too intense for actual practical reasons. But just to make her look like someone who is really um, that, just to bring out the awkwardness of that, that age and those emotions that we have at that time in our life. And honestly, it's some of the things we're battling against is like having, you know, having to deal with a bad hair day or braces can really be epic at that point in your life. So I think it actually makes Misty very um, empathetic. Yeah. Um, and I also just want to touch on the teenage storyline, obviously, and making the clothes look well-worn, you know, because obviously they've been out in the wilderness for who knows how long at this point. And, you know, we also have these glimpses into what will eventually happen in the wilderness with these really wild costumes and the antlers and the kind of camouflage. Um, I mean, do you have like reference points for those more, more creative <laughs> costumes? Oh, I'll say. Yeah. I mean, I did do a lot of researches on masks all over the world. And mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges of course, with that scene, which inspired these costumes was that we couldn't see who, you know, for storytelling purposes, we could not see who these people were. So that's why we had to have a mask. And um, so uh, it kind of led to the development of whatever this ceremony is, has these sort of, and also it's freezing cold. So in my mind, those are balaclavas that, you know, like ski masks, they're made out of like the sleeves of sweaters. They got very crafty during that time and took pieces of their own clothes and repurpose them in ways to service both the ceremony that they're performing and the uh, environmental situation. And um, we had a lot of fun as teenage girls are ought to do. They like to decorate, they like to. So um, we came up with this idea that each one would have a specific animal, one's a skunk, one's sort of representative of a bunny. And then our what the our fans are calling the antler queen is a little bit more um, less amorphic. Like she's not something that's totally identifiable. But we, a lot of the, ma like Misty's mask that she lifts up. I mean, one of the first meetings I had with Karen Kusama, the director was about that mask. And she loved the idea that it was almost like a veil, like a bride's veil. Like we really tried to lean into symbolism that's specifically female to, um, to, um, underline that this is a very like story about women surviving in the wilderness and their own personal wilderness. Um, another thing was that um, we took furs and scraps of clothing and we wove them 
like you would learn at camp how to make a pot holder. And so it was things like that that we tried to incorporate into the um, into the wilderness costumes. Each animal is sort of a hierarchical position in their mean girl clique. Um, and the antler queen has like human hair on her being the highest in the in the clique or whatever this is, as we'll right. discover. Yes, exactly. Um, well, yet, I mean, is a huge part of that, you know, making sure it's mm -hmm. dirty. Right. Well, maybe speaking to that a little bit, there's so I feel like there's a lot of symbols in the show. And I don't yeah. know how much you've been following the fan theories online, but people are really just dissecting the show like scene by scene and what it all means yeah. and the certain costume choices you know the butterfly motif is certainly interesting um obviously the antler antler queen everything that's going on there um what have what have you thought of the kind of fan response it's so fun it's like the <laughs> most fun ever. <laughs> and you know a lot of it came out of necessity like we i mean we kind of came up with that idea during the pilot like when they're getting on the plane we should plant certain things on the plane that we're going to see later in this wilderness costume so that people can harken back to that i mean the iconic pink converse sneakers that come to the edge of that um kill pit uh we don't i didn't never really knew i knew who some i know who some of these people were, but not that character. I, I was like, we need to move these shoes around onto different characters because we don't know who, we have to see them somewhere in the wilderness and we don't know who they belong to. So at some point I'm like, well, they would be sharing their clothes anyway. It's they're sharing their resources as they're living there and they're kind of grabbing what they can. So you'll see those move around. There's other things, the fur rabbit coat that um, Lottie Mayor, wears is supposed to kind of hearken to later on wilderness for there's little details like that so that's been that was really fun we had fun planting those things so it's fun that people found them and are taking them to the next level some of the yeah. theories are really out there and i'm like oh that's kind of good maybe we should do that <laughs> 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 maybe steal steal a few elements yeah, of those theories some ideas. Right. yeah um, well, really quick before I let you go, we are an awards website, and I did just want to point out for people watching that you are an Emmy winner. Um, you won for your work for Transparent back in 2015. Just curious if you had strong memories of that experience and just how much maybe that felt like it had an impact on your career and moving forward and all that. Oh my gosh, that was a, well, obviously, unexpected um win and also so thrilling to be honored by the um the academy um it it was really um cha life changing in the fact that it kind of gave me a lot of confidence to be creative and that to remind you that people are seeing what you're doing and that um what you're expressing matters that people see it and it's not um and appreciate it. It made me feel like I was part of a community, which I didn't necessarily, you know, you get into each of us are on our shows, but we are part of a, a larger um, community of film and makers and creators. And so that was amazing. It was pretty fantastic. Um, the funniest thing that happened to me on the, the night that I won was that I was, we were, Nancy Jarzinko and I both won and we were walking up and we heard this go and we looked around and it's Bradley Whitford from our show who had also oh. won and um it just felt um like a big family and so it was really exciting to be a part of that yeah um well for those of you watching subscribe for more interviews and go to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions uh thank you so much for talking to me today Marie thanks for having me Thank you.